Good day, folks. What's going on? We'll fix it team. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. So today, this is a Ford truck that we're going to work on. And the customer came in saying it had a noise on the rear and I drove it and you could hear it like a, it sounded almost like a tire. But once I put it on the jack stands, I'll flip the camera around. It, uh, put it on jack stands and I let it just run and drive. I put it in, in drive and let it just run. And so put the uh, vehicle on these jack stands and I just let it run, like I said, and I got underneath it with my creeper and I could isolate the sound of this side over here. So what I'm going to do now is remove the wheel, of course, and get the brake caliper off, the brake drum, get this ready to come out, but I'm going to have to remove the differential cover and it's underneath here. And I've got the vehicle jacked up to a certain degree where it's the differential will drain out. It won't let fluid just stay in there. Cause if you jack this the back end up, you're going to get fluid. that's going to hang around in the front part of it. And you want to try to get that stuff out. It's got metal in it and I'll remove all these bolts. There'll be a spider gear shaft, spider gear, meaning where it's a cluster of gears that I'll remove the little pin out shaft so that I can push the axle and get the C clip that retains it. And we'll slide the axle out of the tube. And I've got a special tool that removes the bearing. Hopefully this axle doesn't already have one done. So this thing's were notorious for the passenger side axle to uh, give trouble. It's already got goo, goo on the diffy. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, what we're going to run into. All right, guys, let's get in the lift. Okay, so I got the uh, cover off. The axle out. And I'll give you a little rundown on how that works. Uh, thank goodness... Well, it's easy. You have to just put it in a in like neutral, but you'll turn the rain gear where you can access your spider gear retaining bolt. And let me get it in the camera here. There it is, right there. And it has a. I always use a six point socket on that. Never use a twelve point socket or a wrench because you want to try to the thing can be kind of tight and have Loctite on it, and you don't want to round that bolt off. All right, and then here's the shaft that had to be taken out. And there's the C-clip. And when I take this bolt out, then push this shaft out this way in the direction of the bolt by using my, by reaching around the back side of the carrier and popping it forward, that allows me to be able to, the axle to be pushed in. The axle, I'll push it in, and then the C-clip, you can get the little C-clip out. And the C-clip is what holds it in, right there. It just goes around the, when the axles fit positioned in there all the way, it just goes in. <laughs> goes around that ring, that notch cut out. So, the customer was wanting a repair bearing to be installed. And that's all good, but it's already had that done. Remember, I, at the beginning of the video, I said, we'll see if it's had it one put in it before, because I was looking at where stuff had been done to the differential. You can see, you know, new stuff on there. And, uh... You can see where the old axle bearing used to ride here and it got pretty beat up pretty bad. And then the surface on this, there you can see the, there's this defective metal. The metal on these axles has just got problems with it and it just is weak and it causes that issue. That's why I don't even really trust a repair bearing because you've already got a worn out axle and, and it really doesn't even get a whole new spot. It's part of that bearing can ride on this. And a lot of people won't take anything and file that ridge off from where this original bearing would ride. You'd want to file that ridge off because that ridge would ride on just a little bit of the bearing itself and start cutting the bearing. Then you get metal in there and it's a sealed bearing. When you slide the axle in, it really doesn't get much gear off from the differential. It's sealed off from it. It's got packed grease in it. So that means that everything sort of lays in that area. So uh, now I've got to wait for the customer to let me know what he wants to do. And then we'll go from there. So, so we're at the uh, passenger, I'm mean, sorry, driver's side of the vehicle. And the customer went ahead and gave me the go ahead to do this other side here, as far as like put all new bearings in it because the other, you know, we're going to have to do all that anyhow. So, uh, while I got all parts, we'll get this tore down as well. What we have here is a configuration of slide hammer and the tool that's used to lock in the bearings. It's got a little flapper on the back side of it that allows it to kind of go in like a, almost like a like a toggle bolt. And then you, you kind of fool with it, it'll flip out. Then this washer goes up against the front, cinches it all together. We'll take a wrench and double check this right here when we get to the right now.
just grab the whole toolbox if you're not sure what size it is. I think it's this one here. Yeah, there we go. And then pretty much going to be just hammering out like this right here. Well, this is what it looks like after you use the slide hammer. If you locked it into that there and you slide hammer it out, this is how it comes out with the bearing right here in the seal. And we'll use this bearing to put in the new bearing. To the most part, then we'll, we'll, well, I've got a seal driver, but we'll uh, utilize some of this stuff to kind of reinstall some of that stuff. We use it as a, as a cushion. Yeah. Another thing I'm going to do as well is take a really long, like if I got a pry bar and I'm going to stuff a rag and lean in it, I'm going to wipe out as much as that stuff that's in that tube out, you know, metal and everything that gets in there. And I'll even take maybe some even cleaning. I call you some gas for cleaning because it's, it's almost the same as brake cleaner as far as cost. But yeah, I'll do that and um, clean that tube out. And then the other side as well, we'll do the same thing. We'll slide hammer that other bearing out, clean it out, start reassembling. You see all the the metal that's on this these rags here, much like that one meme post I put out on my, on my community post. This is on the side that didn't fail. The bearing that was not failed. It was just I wanted to change it for preventative maintenance because I knew that it was old and the other side had failed twice already to the where, to the extent of a repair bearing was installed. So I used the, this really long thing here and I did a clean out and I used this gas to wash it down with and got all that stuff out of there got it got the new bearing in it's all nice and clean we're gonna put the seal in and be ready to put this axle back in got the seal in got the seal in put a little bit of grease on that seal thank goodness yeah they, the repair bearings usually do come out a little quicker and easier than the other ones yeah love that smell of gear oil it brings me back to my golf course mechanic in days mm. it did because we used to do a lot of that there was a lot of gear boxes that ran off of gear oil and all of them <laughs> all of them we did they were pretty bad you know we had to keep feeding it. i even got to the point where we were um taking gear, uh, gear oil and wheel bearing grease and i got hold of some old blender and old uh, beaters like i found a set of one of those beaters out of the dump you know you make a cake with you know you plug in it's got the two things that run together I'd take the uh, beaters and put wheel bearing, just dump uh, gear oil into a bucket of wheel bearing grease and go and make this like, look like peanut butter and honey mixture together and then yeah. pump it in by hand. So whatever gear oil would drip out, there'd be a layer of uh, bearing grease left over for stuff. <laughs> yeah. On this um, differential, the C-clip that holds the axle in to keep it, you know, in its position, you'll notice there's a, a beveled side and then there seems to be a, a flat side. And there's a reason for that. You want this beveled side to be actually facing out. And with the old C-clip, you can kind of get an idea how it used to ride on the, on the axle. Let me see here. And see that? If it was, if it was the other way, the wear pattern wouldn't line up. But anyhow. We'll be, it goes up in here. We'll make sure that it's aiming towards the end with the end of the axle. And I'll probably need both hands to do this. Let's see here. It's got to be pushed in all the way. The position of this carrier makes it hard to see what I'm doing, but basically just going to lay it over that lip of the axle. And uh, yeah, we'll push it in, and then the spider gear shaft will go, well, the next axle will go in, same thing, push it that direction so your spider gear shaft goes in, and that keeps the axles in position. Alrighty, so we've got the uh, four pretty much back together now. I'll just give you a little visual of what things look like. Flip this down. All right, so here we are. We've got, of course, the wheels are on it. We've got the drums on. Now I've got to fill it up with the uh, gear oil. I also took time to replace this. The vent hose on it was broken off and I 
got I replaced that with a new vent hose that way we'll keep moisture and other debris out of the diffy uh right up, right up here there's the fill plug and it's pretty simple this is another reason why this truck is jacked up level because I can properly fill it with fluid and my other lift is completely tied up with stuff so yeah I got uh we'll take this plug out and we'll just fill it with the 75 140 synthetic gear oil that it takes but first I'll add the limited slip additive for the clutch pack that's in the differential for the limited slip action and then I'll top it off with the fluid that goes in it so that way we can get the whole bottle in all right guys so we'll do that we'll let it down we'll go for a test drive last thing so I've got it all topped off with the gear oils um I just put this little magnet that I had that came out of an old transmission pan just to it's got one on the drain plug or the fill plug but I went ahead and just decided to stick one right there and I do that a lot of times anyhow it helps to get any residual metal out I tried to wash this differential out as best as possible with brake cleaner and air hose and rags and get all that gear all out with the metal in it but you know can't get it all so that hopefully will catch the rest of it and we'll give it one final wipe down for good measure and then we're gonna go for our, our ever long test drive so yeah all right we're back on our test drive the truck did great zero noise what I'm gonna do is fix an invoice on it and just look underneath it once I get that done to make sure it looks like everything is sealed up so that's great guys thank you guys for watching the video now for my commentary you ready let's flip the camera around and take a look at something that's kind of new to me but I think I like it though this here is what I got my synthetic gear oil in I know they're kind of dirty and crunched up because I had my greasy paws all over it and I was like, oh, man, they're doing this now, you know, because I'm used to seeing the bottles come in that form right there. And I said, well, that's just the way it goes. But then I ended up using it. Here's a nice, fresh, nice, pretty one right here. And uh, I'll have to say, when it comes to putting the gear oil in, if you've got a tight spot where that bottle would be a problem because you'd have to fold that bottle up and hopefully not skid it out of the hole that you've got it in, that stuff there just kind of like you can just squeeze it right in there it works really well so I, I actually um think i like the new style of how they're packaging gear oil like that especially in little quart bottles man it makes it really easy to to put in because if i had to fold this bottle up like that differential in that truck wasn't that bad but if it was somewhere else like a transfer case or a side of a transmission where you don't have a lot of room because of the firewall and the transmission hump that surrounds it that would be pretty problematic. So that there does make it a little bit easier. So I'll give that a thumbs up on the new stuff that I'm okay with right now. Now, however, this gas can with that stuff right there, I give that a thumbs down. All right, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. You guys are wonderful. Thank you for all the new subscribers and thank you for all the people coming over here supporting this channel. You guys are great. We'll fix it team and we're out.